The American Revolution has a profound effect on American military policy for at least 150 years after the conclusion of the conflict. At the end of the war, the Americans were victorious. They had told themselves before the war that their Minutemen and their militiamen were superior to British regulars. And at the conclusion of the conflict that they had won, they had no reason to want to critically reassess those assumptions, even though the events of the war had largely revealed them to be untrue. The Continental Army, an army built upon the model of the British Army, was largely responsible for the ultimate American victory, but Americans didn't want to remember the war that way. So instead, they celebrated the accomplishments of America's citizen soldiers, of the militiamen. And this is going to influence American military policy throughout the rest of the 18th century and for much of the 19th century and arguably even beyond. So after the war, Congress asked George Washington to express his views on the kind of military establishment that he thought was necessary to safeguard the interests of the Republic. And Washington's sentiments on a peace establishment in 1783 identified the need for a competent, professional army, trained and disciplined, as well as a well-regulated militia. The emphasis ought to be here on well-regulated militia. In other words, a militia that was different than the one that he had to rely upon during the American Revolution. But in the political climate following the Revolution, there was no enthusiasm in Congress for the plan that Washington proposed. And so they kept the most minuscule of regular armies and left the militia more or less as it was, under the complete regulation of the states, rather than under any kind of effective federal control. It's not until after a century of military mishaps and near-run disasters in the 19th century that by 1903, Congress is at last willing to undertake substantial militia reform, citizen-soldier reform, in the form of the Dick Act. And so this memory, a cherished memory about the superiority of American militiamen is going to work as something of a, a yoke stone tied around the neck of the American military for most of the 19th century. It's only after a number of disasters in the late 18th and early 19th century that Congress begins to warm to the idea that a professional army needs to be the centerpiece of its military establishment with militia forces augmenting it rather than being the centerpiece itself.